Recently at PuppetConf, Puppet released a new feature called Tasks. In short, a task is a small CLI, uh, it's a small script, basically. And they have a runner called Bolt that copies your scripts onto a set of machines using SSH or WinRMI or, or any pro, uh, you know, number of um, protocols. Runs it, grabs the output and collates it back to your display. It's quite nice, it uses SSH, so whatever access you have to machines, you know, it's not going to be able to do anything on machines where you don't have access. If you have sudo on the machine, it can now use sudo, so it's pretty good from that from that perspective. Um, and of course, it's easy to get going, there's only SSH required. The problem is that the code lives on your shell, and if you have a large operations team, like, you know, at one of my clients, we have hundreds, if not thousands of operations people. If there was a problem with a task, a bug, maybe it accidentally can delete rm rf slash with my task, and I wish to up release a new version of the task, I have no way to ensure that all of these home directories and shells and bastions and whatever gets this update. So for me, the the it's you know, of course Bolt is easy to get going, but you know it comes at a price. The ease of use comes at a price. And so what I wanted to look at is how to integrate Bolt into M Collective to give it a more robust run run environment. Now the Puppet server has APIs that allow you to retrieve metadata about tasks and also the the logic for the task. And so using those APIs, I did a full integration of tasks into M Collective. If we run MCO tasks, it asks the Puppet server for available tasks and um, list them for you if you do detail. <clears throat> Again, the same, it asks the Puppet server for the tasks. And uh, unfortunately, now it has to communicate with the Puppet server on a per task basis. Uh, the API is not, it doesn't give me a quick way to get this, but I've opened a ticket to address that. And so you can see there's a number of tasks here. Some of them have nice, you know, descriptions of what's going on. Some of them have nothing. This one I know, this is just like some test script I made, but um, it has no JSON file. So no, there's no description to show me. But what it does show is that you can have just a script, no JSON file, no extra effort of metadata or anything like this, and it's still usable. If you make the effort, you'll get a little bit more. So if we look at this one, for instance, this is a task that publishes to a specific pub subtopic. There's a bunch of information required here, inputs and outputs, and these are puppet data types. So, um, you know, there's some implied validation and, and, and checking that things are in a you know, good shape. Now, typing JSON, typing hashes on the shell is difficult. So, Bolt and, and also M Collective and Corea supports accepting JSON files or YAML files in case of Corea, um, or I'll show you some other options in a minute um, to supply these arguments to your to your scripts. Now what I want to do is I want to focus on these two Acme ones over here. The idea is that I have an application, Acme, that's upgradable using a task. Now maybe I'm in a controlled environment and I want to ensure that people can only upgrade my my application during a declared maintenance window. And so there's a task here that declares, well, enables or disables or starts and stops my maintenance windows, and then there's upgrade to do the actual upgrade. Now, I have two roles here. I have a shell for an ops person, I have a shell for a release engineer person, and this release engineer, you know, could be the product owner or whoever, someone who's capable of declaring a maintenance window. That's what this release engineer shell is. And underneath M Collective's RBAC is used to express and force this maintenance window concept. So let's have a look. Um go tasks run back and upgrade down version on all my Linux machines. In Malta. It'll now first make sure that the script is on the machines and it will try to run it and it can't because the RBAC, M Collective's RBAC tells it, sorry, you cannot. It doesn't matter what's in the script, what's in the task, the RBAC lives above the task and it, no matter what people put in the task or forget to put in the task, RBAC will be there. Likewise, auditing will there be there as well. So let's reach over to our release engineer person. 
I take the same machines, Malta and Linux, and I enable maintenance on them. Now it downloads a task onto the machines and enables maintenance. In typical in the fashion, it's only showing me failing requests over here, so it's not showing me scroll of 222 or 220 or 2200 machines. Um, it's only showing me the failures, but I can see that they were all successful, and so I know my machines are now in maintenance. If I go back up to my operations person, and I now try to upgrade my code again, it makes sure that my upgrade task is the latest on all of my machines, it is. And now runs the task. Now it waits here in typical impact of fashion, it waits for the command to complete. But it doesn't actually run in the foreground. Like if I if this was a task that's gonna run for three or four or five or six hours, that task will continue to run even at this point. The task is still running, potentially. And because I have this ID here, I can later on come and check back on my task and see how it's doing. Is it finished? How many nodes are done? All this kind of stuff. So let's have a look at that. Um, so we just do anchor task status and this ID. And it shows me again just a summary of it. Now I can do both. And I see all of the output that the machines produced. Um, all of the output. I can also do things like see a bit of information just like you know what was run, who ran it, when did they run it, all this kind of stuff and um, even the runtime. And this metadata is available to you also in the end collective data system. So later on you could for instance discover all nodes that ran this task were completed as false. Or all machines that ran this task where runtime was excessive or where there's no standard output produced or where there were standard error output produced. And so this will allow you to run a task, interrogate it later on. If you notice there was a problem with your task, you'll be able to select out using NPEG Discovery all of the nodes where this deployment previously failed um, and rerun your task if you wish or run a follow-up once only on those. So that's very nice, um, tight integration with NPEG data system. And then when the maintenance window is over, our um, Release engineer here declares it over. It turns it off on all of the machines, and I'll just show you for completeness sake that again I cannot execute my task on my machines. Now let's take a look at the at the um, policies first for the RBAC. This is the RBAC file, typical and collective RBAC file. No one's allowed to run any tasks whatsoever. Everyone has access to the basic tasks feature. And so what this means is um, the RBAC is being called twice. Once for access to the end collective subsystem and once for access to individual tasks. And so this is access to the subsystem. So you can do, you can have a certain subset of people on the collective who's allowed to use tasks at all. You know, they want which task, but they can access just the basic feature. In this case, everyone can access the basic feature. Now my upgrade task, I allow it to only do an upgrade if some file is present. It's a bit ghetto. I mean, it's not damp. It's not very safe. But for the purposes of a demo, you get the idea. There's a data plugin. I can interrogate the machine and only when the data plugin, um, the information that it presents matches some expectation is the upgrade allowed. Now you could write your own plugins here. Maybe you have some file somewhere that's a calendar or a database or something a bit more secure than some file in slash temp or whatever. You can write your own plugins over there or you can just do it like this if you want. But the point is there is logic living within my RBAC. And this here is a full um, Boolean expression and there's a number of data plugins. So I can, for instance, say, only allow upgrade on machines where it's in maintenance mode, where Puppet is already disabled, and where Puppet isn't currently doing a deploy, or in development. 
And so what it means is I can have a very strict set of rules about under which circumstances a certain task is allowed to run. And those rules are dynamic and they can inter inter interrogate the state of the machine. Is Puppet running or not? Is Puppet st stable or not? Is Puppet disabled or not? Is the machine in maintenance mode? Is it in production or is it in development? All of these kind of rules you can write out and combine into a very expressive RBAC. Then we have our maintenance rule and of course the release engineer person can enable or disable the maintenance window and we have some SRE or something over here that can do anything. Any task, any time of the day on any machine. So these are the RBAC rules. Now we saw earlier that I ran this task. So let's have a quick look at the um, auditing. This is Mclective's audit log. It's in JSON format. Or oh, Coria. It's in JSON format. If I pull out the audit log entries for just that status, you can see here when, who, what machines, all of this kind of information, um, a full audit trail complete with all of the inputs and the outputs and the files being executed, even the ashes of the tasks being executed, what task is being run. So this year, the action is run and wait. So this is access to the basic tasks feature. And here we have the actual task being run. So you can see there's a two phase RBAC and every phase is being audited. So you have your full auditing and your full um, RBAC integration here. <clears throat> now, This is ready, you can see it working. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. It's a little bit of, of UI tweaks I want to do. Um, actually, let me show you one last thing here. Um, I can go back to my task and I can extract this history as JSON. And we can do, for instance, you can see a summary of the task. Um, or stats about the task, individual items about the task, all of the outputs are here. You can do um, creps into the JSON output from your task and so forth. It's very, very nice. Um, anyway, so there's a few things here. You know, it's nice. Um, I'm about ready to ship it. There's a few UI tweaks I wish to do, like I don't just show things like uh, not a number errors and this kind of stuff, but. Um, the major thing I wish to do is here you can see that I have an input declared and I have a specific validation that I'm doing on that input. Now for me it's critical, like it is MVP. If you are letting people typing in validations, it's deeply irresponsible to ship code that doesn't actually check that. Now, and there is no easy way to do that today, which is why Bolt doesn't yet do it. Um, but Puppet dot next, whichever the next version of Puppet will come out, will have APIs that allows third party pieces of Ruby code to do just that. I'll be able to pass it the value that I got from target version and this, and it will tell me whether it's a match or not. And so then I can do client side validation, which will means I can give you errors very quickly. And I can do server side validation, which means it's secure and it's safe. And validation is always done regard independent of the client. And so once that's available, um, you can look to Coria to ship this feature um, available for everyone. It's early days. Like I said, this is my first implementation of, of this stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'd be keen to hear some feedback. Thank you very much.